or underneath the gas line. And it takes uh, a little hydraulic pressure, a little water pressure, a winch, and a two dollar kit we bought off eBay. <laughs> The other side of the trench gas line is somewhere right here they're going to be punched out somewhere down here i was looking at the alignment of these trenches that they dug and they're a little off so i think he's going to come out right on the corner over here for lucky or he might be still on this wall and he's going to take the back one they got it really should have been turned I'm just a little bit okay so anyways So I've started, oh, there we go. Okay, it's through. So either they're gonna take it back, ream it as I go back out, switch on the bits. or they're gonna put a different bit on it, which I think they're gonna do, and then that'll make it big enough to pull that two inch pipe through. I don't know if there's enough room to switch this bit out. Yeah, should be. Two. That worked out pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad, that'll work. We don't have to tighten those on, they just, you know, they just wedge themselves on. Okay, well, okay, should work. All right. Now this is just a really, really crude form of boring under something. But with the technology they have out there, which you guys have already seen us use, that stuff's amazing. What's even better is the tunnel drilling rigs that literally drill like a subway tunnel or a water tunnel to direct like a river. And they can just pop out within inches of where they intended to go miles away is Engineering way above me, way above me. All right, that's done burrowing for now. Um, we definitely have more we gotta do. We gotta punch under the county road in two different places, but we gotta get permits for that. They, uh, they don't like it when you, you know, mess with the county road without telling them. We've done that. They were very gracious, but next time we'll make sure that we hit the permit so we don't have a, a scolding again. It's not worth it. We actually have windows for these things, wind shields. We just haven't had time to put them on yet, but they're coming. We just haven't done it yet. It's amazing the suspension they have on these things anymore do a lot do a really a lot of that doesn't take much now that we bore underneath those gas lines uh, we we're ready to lay some pipe on the ground so I'm taking the trailer with a two inch pipe or poly and uh, we'll lay it out on the ground Pool trailer. And that there is a curl remover. I don't know the correct term for it, but what it does basically is it takes the curl that's been spooled up like that. Well, the hose is going to want to curl up like a like a spring, so that takes it out of it. So we're just free willing it. We're going to lay this out. That is a two-inch line. It's way overkill for what he's doing, but he's connecting to a two-inch line up there, and the price wasn't terribly different, so they just decided to just go two-inch. So I guess he's not gonna have a problem with the water. <laughs> so we lay the line out, and then we'll bring the ripper up, feed it through it, get it all set up, and then tomorrow morning, it's go time when Roy shows up. Roy's the missing link. Once Roy shows, it's pipe land. Now, what we have going on here is the two inch poly. It's got this nice one to put a little clevis on it. We're gonna back the ripper into the hole, set it down, loop it in through the ripper, and then we're gonna go underneath the, sp uh, the spot over here where we bored underneath the, this uh, gas line, and then we'll pull it the whole entire way up the trench, fuse it, and then when we're ready, we can rip the rest of it in. That's the plan. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll find out.
There we go, she's in. So, Roy said let's flag it. Makes sense, we're gonna mark this spot here. So we'll put something to distinguish that this is where the pipe ended at. And then uh, we'll come with a backhoe later and dig her up. Perfect. That's awesome. All right, Roy had to take off, but he uh, he definitely took off the training wheels, so he's gonna let us go at it ourselves. Uh, that last pull we did was was tough. It was biting hard. These tires were twisting more than I've seen them twist, and I don't know why, because we pre-ripped it five feet and laying the pipe in five. So it was it was a struggle, but we got it. What's awesome about these big buds is they've got the torque converter, so you can pull down and it'll literally take itself out of gear and go 100% on the torque converter. And then when it finally gets going again and builds RPMs up, it'll lock out and go back into the gear. And that's a, that's a huge thing because you don't stall out 100%. And it's not hard on it. You don't want to run on that for a long time because you'll generate heat. But for brief periods, and that's why brief periods is fine. That's why you see a bunch of big buds with these tileage machines because that torque converter makes it awesome. The Steiger, we had that thing snorting hard. It is amazing how well those tires are gripping that ground. Weighted down just about perfect. Doesn't hop doesn't hop, but my dad had second gear wide open and it actually brought that tractor down to 1400 RPM until we finally got going again. We, we, were, we were pulling hard. Amazing, amazing, but it's working. Though, if you did this for a living, I think you'd go through some tires. I mean, they're doing okay, but I've seen some chips and some scratches and some cuts that are happening to these things, so they're just sitting there spinning. You know, you got a rock, sharp rock underneath and spinning on it with all that pressure and weight you're gonna do some damage so if you did this for a living you'd be going through tires more than i think the average guy just farming so what we're doing here is we're gonna seam or glue this section of pipe that there we didn't have enough to finish the extra 150 yards we had to go so they brought another roll he's prepping it this die basically grabs on each end of the pipe he's seam he's got a special cutting tool which is right here we'll put that in there they'll squeeze it you'll see in a second and it'll trim the ends so they're perfectly flush and then this engine we got running here the generator and it's heating up this basically hot iron to 500 degrees and we'll put that in the middle and when he's ready he'll pull the lever and we'll press the two into that hot iron melt the ends so they're nice and gooey take it out and then pull the lever again and it'll shove the ends together and glue them together but supposedly the weld is stronger than the actual pipe itself degrees so here is the weld Isn't that cool I mean it's just basically melting plastic into plastic so it's not like it's that complex but the fact that that there will stay together if you were to put two tractors on either side of this pipe and pull it would tear somewhere else than that joint that joint has more plastic in it now than anywhere else in the pipe. Okay, if you can set it down a little bit. There you go, right there, that's good. This uh, last pull of putting the pipe in on this section, we're trying to get down to that six foot close and it's digging. I want to thank Case IH for letting us to keep this tractor a little longer. Uh, so that we can use it to uh, pull these uh, short chunks of line into the ground. Um, this tractor is great. Uh, it has the differential lock where the bud does it. And as you can see on that, you'll see, um, you know, different t uh, sections of the front and rear end turn differently. Where this one here, both of them are turning the same. This is definitely digging, um, trying to get uh, the, that uh, you know half a foot to a foot deeper into the ground but once you start lining running this line you're committed so we're just about to the end so 
We'll uh, run until they tell us to stop. There we go, done with the water line for now. I gotta do mine, wherever that way, but I gotta go on a little trip, so we're not gonna be able to do that today. That's good, we got leg arms water line done. I think the master pipe layer, Randy, would be proud of us. Right, Randy? Okay, here's the original line that we have going to the farm. This is the line that we trenched in to go over to my new location for the home. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the the joiner unit right here, clamp it down, cut the pipe. I've already got it draining on that side. We'll have to make sure all the water is out of this line before we fuse the two. And then we'll pull this one out of the way, fuse the T on, try to get this one up, fuse that one on, and then we'll do the line going to my line, or to my place. So hopefully it works, but if we have problems, well, we'll just figure it out as we go. So as you can tell, we fused it here, we're letting it cool. Then we're gonna jump across and we're gonna fuse that one to here. We'll have to cut off a little bit of this. And then if you look at that T, that'll connect to this pipe, which runs all the way over. So sweet, making progress. Couple days and we're back at it. We're gonna lay the gas lines now. So dad and I are gonna go get this set up, get it in position. We do have to cross one major water line, like I've said in the past. So we've got a uh, sea worker coming out here and he's gonna make sure that we're good to go on that. And then when we're good, we'll start pulling hard, get that gas line laid in and we're done. Isn't that amazing? All right, let's go. So I have the butt in neutral, parking brakes off. He's just pulling me with the stagger. Yeah, it's got enough power to do that. And then when we get in position, I will then pull him back up, set the ripper in the ground, the pipe layer. He'll be in neutral. I got enough power to do that too. And then the two of us then, when it's ready to go, we'll roll some coal, lay it to it, put that pipe in the ground. second pull but putting the gas line in as they probably said in one of the videos uh, part of the video anyway and uh, I'm running in third throttle back a little bit but uh, I'm trying to just gauge that by the slippage and I'm pulling around anywhere from 11 to 14 15 percent so I am pulling some of the load um, and he's also pulling so uh, that's kind of how I'm figuring on uh, how much pull that I should or what gear so it's 
got to have a little bit of slip each, so that means I'm pulling my share. So anyway, we're in for the long pull. Yeah, you guys are doing a solid four feet. So one thing we found out, uh, I haven't had that the knife on the ripper pipe layer i didn't have it set up for so it was towing this whole time we've been ripping which has been way more harder on these tractors to pull finally got it figured out now it's fairly level in the ground and it's pulling like half as hard if only would have known that at the beginning oops Okay, well, we're laying the pipeline, the water line. We're running it down another foot, so we're going down five and a half, six feet. We're doing pretty well. Yeah, she's really pulling now. We're chewing through it, though. We only have another about 100 feet left to go, so we'll make it. Last rip. We got my water line done. Now we're doing Scott's gas line, leg arms. Leg arms gas line. Name's Scott, you guys know that. My brother. He's my brother. Put that outside. Solid four feet right now. Since we got the angle of the knife figured out, call out the knife, it's been a lot easier. These tractors are doing a great job. They're not spinning like they were. They're gripping hard, pulling hard. Good fit. This is the pre-rip, so we'll come back again and lay the pipe in the next pass. But we're gonna get one rip in first just to make sure we're good. So there's no, you know, sunken boulders underground there that we don't know is there. You're laying the pipe in, and then you hit one of those, and then you're sunk. You gotta dig it all up. we go 10,000 feet of pipes in the ground for gas and water still got to do some electrical but that's the next step won't be using this for that but it's been a good 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 rig thankful to the Benjamins for building this Harry Benjamin the legend the one who built that miniature big bud that was in the fire multiple times you guys saw this is Harry's Harry's and uh they're just a pretty amazing family to be able to put something together like that they built three of these you never know some guys out there just got talent, talent like you not believe, and it works really good. So we're thankful for that demo, the 620 Steiger. That really helped out a ton pulling this uh, 600 butt around. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, please. It'd be great. And uh, next video is coming soon. We'll see you then.